Hey guys, this is Richard Beck with Beck Tools, and today we have another uncut video. And in this video, we are going to machine a steel part. This is not one of those, how hard can we push the MR1, can it do it videos. This is a part that I have dialed in. Um, this is what the part looks like coming straight off the machine, no deburring whatsoever. Now I do have a video that goes into detail on how this is done with zero burrs, but I'm going to run this whole part and show you, and maybe while it's running, I'll explain a little bit about that, but we're going to go ahead and start this program. All right, I'm going to be running mist coolant. No, uh, the fall, yeah, mist coolant here. Let's zoom in. So I'm at 8,000 RPM, speed rate is 32 inches per minute. This is a four flute, 316 carbide end mill. Uh, I forget what the ramp rate is. I think it's one degree. So I'm not going very aggressive on the ramp rate. Is what I am doing, when I get to the bottom of this hole, I'm gonna go an extra 50 foul. The reason I do that as these end mills wear, the leading edge gets more dull, and that edge will have the most deflection. So, um, I want to make sure the part that's dull is actually below the surface. Now, you'll see right now, it looks like there's a burr on that top edge. Don't worry, it won't matter. Once I finish boring this, I'm going to take a 5,000 finishing pass at full depth. That finishing pass will cut away this burr that you can see on the top. After that, I'll take a spring pass, which is zero step over. It's just going to clean this part up and get rid of any inaccuracies due to tool deflection. And that's how you do it. And then there's a smaller hole. Now, the reason I did this in two boring paths instead of one, if I did one, there would be a little tiny metal piece sticking up in the center. And at the very end, when that breaks off, it can damage your end mill. I've lost end mills that way. So if I'm doing a large hole like this with a small end mill, I will do um, two step overs just to make sure I don't have the center uncut because I don't want that to break free right at the bottom of the hole um, because I've damaged end mills. Now, I also don't do tool changes, okay? Tool changes are a massive time suck. And since I run production parts on this machine, I don't have any time, not a second to waste. It's all about how quick can I get these parts done and have perfect parts. So I'm not changing tools. I will just run both this large hole and the little hole with the same tool. The downside is that leaves me a lot of times, see that was a 5,000 full depth of cut pass. A lot of times that leaves me using smaller end mills than most people would. But the reason being is because I also have to do this little hole. And also, I don't like super tight helical tool pass. It shakes the machine. It's not good for the ball screws. Um, so this is a 201. No, this is a 5 16th hole with a 3 16th end mill. Could I use a quarter inch end mill? I could. But that circular interpolation would be a really, really tight circle. And um, that doesn't allow room for the chips to evacuate the hole. So that's why I don't want to do that. So I'm left with using a 316 bend mill. Um, but in the end, you'll see it's all worth it because we're going to have a beautiful part. I am surprised though I can take a 5 foul step over at a half inch deep on a 3 16th end mill. Right here it goes, it's going to happen right now. It's a little aggressive, but now this is a spring pass 
There you go. Perfect part. Let's check it out. Now, I had my face super close to the uh, camera here, so hopefully you could hear me over the noise of the machine. But we're gonna pull this part out and take a look at it. Okay, so I've gotten a lot of positive feedback from the uncut videos. If you're one of the people that don't like them, leave me a comment below. Most people seem to like them because I'm not hiding anything. These are basically live and whatever comes to mind is, is what you get. So look at that guys. Look at that. No burr. No burr. Now, here's the real test. Look at that. Precision. Dead nuts on. There's no wiggle. Can't even wiggle this. Perfect. It'll fall out. It's tight enough. You almost have to wiggle it. So, there you go, guys. Who says the MR1 can't machine steal? I know some of you guys have lost faith a little bit after some of those torture test videos I did. But here's the truth. It can machine steal. And I'm going to be machining a lot more steel and, you know, honing my steel skills Currently, most of what I run is aluminum, so I'll admit my feeds and speeds for steel aren't always the best or dialed, but this part here, um, I've run a, a lot of these. This is a tracking device um, for the BA Shredder. The BA Shredder is a DIY 2x72 bell grinder that I sell on the website. If you're interested, head over to becktools.com. Anyways, guys, that's all I got. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Leave a comment in the comments below. Tell me what you think. Uh, give me suggestions for future videos. And uh, I'll see you next time.